As we're looking for secrets from the ancient paths all over Israel, it's kind of surprising the lessons you can learn from a, a, a set of ruins. We're in Kadesh. We're at the refuge city of Kadesh. We're in the mountains of Naphtali and what's called Upper Galilee. Now, before we walk up to the ruins, I want to show you something that I'm not sure you can see at all. It's so overgrown. But if I were to walk through here from this series of rocks all the way over here, we could find the city wall, the entire city wall. We're talking about 20 feet of rock, sand. I mean, this was a secure wall. In fact, we are told it's the largest wall found surrounding an ancient city like this anywhere in Israel, 20 feet all the way around. Now, come, and come here. I'd like to share with you um, a little bit about construction. Maybe you're into construction or maybe you're like me and you've just wondered how in the world did they manage to hold such large stones together? First of all, check out this column. You hardly ever see a column that big. I mean, that is huge. And that's one piece. Most columns were made of slices. I'll show you one. This stone is round and it's, it's kind of like a slice of a column. Now we could go to several other sites and you would see the ground just littered with slices of stone. And what would happen is they would stack those slices together and at the end they would put plaster on it and it would give the appearance of being one stone. That's what we're used to. So there's one there. It used to be probably on this pedestal. You can see this pedestal was designed to hold up enormous weight. How did the top of that column hold together? They would stack up the columns and then they would leave a cone in the, I mean, just as literally as they carved it, they wouldn't carve everything off the top cone. They'd leave a little cone and then it would fit in this indention in the top of that column. Eventually they've got a stack of these pieces and then the capital on top and then they would plaster the whole thing so it would look like one column. But we've come to Kadesh and I want to show you one more thing. It has to do with archaeology. It has to do with the Bible. Check this out. So this is the city gate. Pretty, pretty broad, wonderful, secure entrance into Kadesh. Now look, I want to show you something. These little holes all throughout this area that's designed for the city gate to lock. The city gate is made of wood. Now, apparently, in this city gate, they had steel, uh, iron bars, some, some kind of security system where they could lock the city gate. You see, the city gate is the weakest point of entrance. Um, in your home, your back door, your front door probably has not only a lock, but a deadbolt lock. It's the weakest part of your home defense system. And so you, you put locks there. The city gate is the weakest, weakest part of, of this community. And they put in a locking system. And that's where the Bible lesson comes into place. God had asked the people of Kadesh to be a city of refuge. So if, if you're working in a field and an axe head flies off accidentally and it kills the person you're working with, you, you want to come to a city of refuge for a trial. And that's exactly what the Bible said could happen in one of the many cities of refuge. And this one is in the Upper Galilee. So it's a regional city. You know what this lesson, the, this locking system tells me about the people of Kadesh? When God told them, I want you to be a city of refuge, they took that job very, very seriously. And I think that's the obvious lesson for us. When God gives you a job, take, take the command seriously and get it done. Lock it down. Let's put it that way. Let's lock it down. Wow, we're in the upper Galilee in the mountains of Nephtali in one of the cities of refuge that the Bible tells us about from Kadesh. I'm Andy Cook.